Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Build and Chill. Today I have the SDEX Standard Line Gundam Death Scythe, I believe it's the Endless Waltz version. Can't really see because it is cut off on the screen and now there's a glare. But I'm pretty sure it's the Endless, uh, Endless Waltz version, which I think is called the Death Scythe Hell, which is rad as fuck. So, the SDEX Standard Line is pretty divisive from from what I can tell just because uh, you're gonna see the reason action a little bit right there that's a lot of stickers for such a tiny little uh, model kit even though there's not too many runners you got a lot of stickers um, just because obviously they're not gonna fit so many different runners with so many different colors inside the box um, so yeah a lot of the SDEX standard line kits a lot of people just don't like because they really rely on the stickers I do know that uh, a lot of them the back tends to be very hollow looking, like they, they don't make full parts, they're, they're uh, hollow on the back, so you can really only display them from, you know, specific angles before that becomes apparent, which a lot of people don't like too, I know. Um, just in general, I've seen a lot of people that just really hate these, but I kind of like how they look, I, I think they look cool. I know that there are um, BB Senshi, I believe is the other SD line of Gunpla, and I have one of those actually sitting uh, in my room right now, the uh, box for it. I just haven't gotten around to building it yet. Uh, but yeah, from from what I can tell, I, I like these SD EX standard line kits just because um, I think for the price they actually look pretty good. Like this was only I want to say like eight dollars. It uh, once again, like I did for the first episode, I'll link to it below. But yeah, it, it was pretty cheap. So even though you can see it right there, there's a shit ton of stickers. Um, and hey, recurring theme from last episode, I kind of struggled with putting these on as well. Um, and I wasn't entirely happy with the results, but overall, I, I think that I, I had a good time with this kit. It was a good second kit, and uh, I don't know, I, I like the SD kits just because they still look pretty cool, even though they're tiny and, you know, the whole deformed, chibi-looking thing. Uh, but they're really cheap and fun to build for what they are, all things considered. Um, so yeah, this kind of sucked. Uh, two of the uh, pieces came just right off the runner. Um, <laughs> which, uh, I mean, I guess they come from Japan, you know, shipping all that way, they're gonna get bumped around and stuff, but yeah, it kind of sucked that they were loose like that. But I've heard that's not too uncommon, even uh, when they don't have to ship overseas, so. Uh, yeah, cutting out the headpiece there. You can see the runners are very tiny, have very few pieces on them. Uh, these kits are really, really simple. They're, from what I understand, a, a lot of their appeal is for younger Gunpla builders. Um, or just people that want a quick build. Like, uh, I actually, even if I decide, you know, later on in life, like, I don't want to, you know, build a shit ton of high grades or if I run out of time, I think there's always a place to get some SD kits because, like I said a million times already, they're super cheap. And you can make these in less than an hour if you really... I mean, probably two hours if you're taking your time and want to make it look super good, but they're really simple to build. Um, and you can see I'm already basically done with the head there. I'm uh, putting the eye sticker on, doing some panel lining. You can see me uh, kind of bringing out the features of the face there, and I'm... Uh, well, I, I actually cut out the panel lining because like my face got into the shot and I'm not comfortable portraying that but yeah I was just uh, erasing some of the messier panel lines so it looked looked nice and clean so and then that's the uh, the black that goes around the head kind of looks like a weird like Roman Legion helmet <laughs> when the uh, face isn't in there but I think that's one half of it yeah there we go so it goes right in there, and I think then there's another piece, yeah, that clamps onto it. There we go. That's a head. So <laughs> one thing, I you can kind of see it poking through my thumb there. Uh, oh, there's the uh, little head crest, which is just one yellow piece. Made a whole runner just for that thing. Um, there are some stickers on the side of the face that don't wrap around well that are like these red red stickers with black lines right on the cheeks. Uh, and they didn't really end up looking too great. Uh, that and there's a knee sticker that I'll show later on that I kinda fucked up. <laughs> so that kinda sucks, but 
there you can kind of see the white poking through, especially on that side. It looks kind of bad, <laughs> but uh, I still like it. And you can see the hollow backing on that crust there, which is kind of emblematic of the things people don't like with these kits, but I don't mind it too much. I, um, I'm going to be honest, I know a lot of people, especially in the West, they uh, started with um, Gundam Wing, but I actually didn't. Um, I watched Gundam Wing when I was a kid, for sure, but I was way more interested in G Gundam, and I don't, I, actually, I think to this day, I maybe haven't finished Gundam Wing all, all, you know, all episodes of it. Uh, I would watch it when it was on, when I was younger, but I kind of had the thing that I think a lot of other kids my age specifically did with Gundam Wing, where it was a lot of talking and a lot more, a little bit more mature themes that I don't think I, I really got, and I got kind of bored just because I, I wasn't really grasping the whole, um, you know, the, the whole war angle of it and kind of how they treated it, which is, you know, a little bit above what other shows on Toonami and stuff uh, were like at the time. So, um, I have gone back as an adult and rewatched a, a few bits, but... Not gonna lie, as an adult, I've been a lot more interested in uh, UC and um, Double O and a few other shows like Iron Blooded Orphans. So I, I should probably go back and uh, finish watching Gundam Wing. I know Right Stuff, who've been uh, really excellent with putting out uh, a lot of different Blu rays for Gundam stuff in recent years. I actually have um, the first half of Zeta. I need to get the second half. Um, I've already watched it already just online, but I kind of want to own that series on Blu ray because I like it a lot. Um, they have this. Uh, I think like this ultra collector edition of Gundam Wing with all the um with like the movie and the OVA version of the movie and I think another OVA I never knew existed all coming out uh, in fall that's like $200. Not going to get that, but I, I think they have a standard edition of Gundam Wing coming to Blu-ray too, which um maybe I'll pick that up, who knows. Actually, I think Gundam Wing might be on Crunchyroll, so I probably just do that, but you can see the arms there. Uh they have some really big buff shoulder pads that you slide in these little white pieces to. Kind of look like little spikes. I feel kind of bad because I probably could have panel lined the uh... There's like two, you can't really see it, but those two little spike pieces on the shoulders are overlapping. Um, and uh, I probably could have panel lined that to kind of accentuate that more, but I decided not to and I'm too lazy to go back and do that now. Uh, so these knees, <laughs> the, well, the legs, rather, those white pieces are stickers, and they don't wrap around well all that good either. <laughs> so one of the knees looks real bad, the other one looks kind of bad, but okay. So just getting closer here, you can see the waist attached to the torso there. Those white pieces on the uh, skirts are uh, stickers as well. Those are the arms. Those are the stickers that go on the knee, and you can see they look pretty beat up and rough just because I fucked around with them so much. Uh, these are the wings, though. The wings look cool. The uh, red bits on the uh, wings are stickers, which is kind of unfortunate just because, again, from the back, you can't really uh, get that red effect there. It's just an all-black piece, but let's put them all together. And he's standing putting his arm out there just uh, in preparation for the beam scythe. I don't think he comes with any other weapons, but to be honest, if you're going to make a death scythe kit and not put the scythe there, what are you doing? You know, you got to have the scythe there. There's a little thumbs up. Positivity. Got to love it. There's the scythe. I think it's just all one piece. I don't, uh, I don't think you had to connect anything there. Now, you do get two stickers for the scythe, though, so there's one for the front end, one for the back end. I, I um... Yeah, I slightly ripped one of the uh, scythe stickers, but it's fine. There we go. There we go, got the wings there, got the scythe there. Trying to get them to stand balanced properly. A little back heavy because of the wings, you know, but... Oh, yep, there you go, <laughs> he just fell. Um, but overall, really good kit. I, I, like I said, I know SD, SDEX standard kits aren't going to be for everyone. I totally get that. Here's what he looks like up close, as you can see. Knee sticker's a little rough. The... Uh, cheek stickers a little rough, but other than that, I really dig it. Um, like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Gundam Wing, but I like the Death Scythe a lot. Probably my favorite Gundam for uh, from that show, so. I like the kit. 
So, originally I did have him just in that scythe holding kind of neutral pose, um, but uh, recently I decided I was going to have him kind of doing a more dynamic pose with his uh, scythe over the shoulder like that, so that's what he looks like on my shelf now. Uh, <laughs> please uh, please ignore the shining of the scythe, which is kind of a cool effect in the photo, but um, that's just because I had to take this under a uh, lamp because it was the middle of the night when I took this photo. Um, but yeah, overall I really liked the kit. It's not going to be for everyone, but if you want something that's cheap, simple, and in my opinion looks pretty good for your money's worth, uh, I, I say the uh, SDEX Standard Death Scythe looks pretty cool. So, yep, thanks for watching another episode of Build and Chill. Got more on the way. Have a good one.